How's it going everybody? This is Viper01. I had a question on another video, uh, not my video, but it was somebody else's video, and that is, if you have to add air to a brake chamber to release a brake, then why do you have to add more air pressure to once again engage the brake? And that question I actually have come across quite a bit. Um, it basically has to do with people just not understanding how an air brake works. Now this is how most people see an air brake chamber. The air brake chamber, of course, is uh, the main mechanical force in uh, applying your air brakes. Now, I'm going to take you what a brake chamber looks like uh, without the vehicle. And you can see here, this is your typical brake chamber. Okay, it has two halves, and this is the trick, and this is this will probably pull a eureka moment for uh, several people, um, but it has two chambers. One chamber is your standard air brake, that's when you step on the pedal, and the other chamber is your spring, or uh, some people call it emergency brake, and this is basically what goes off when you pull out the buttons on your dash, the yellow button and red buttons. Okay, so there's two different sides to this brake chamber. Now, on the front axle of a of a air brake vehicle, like a a transport or a uh, dump truck, something like that, you you won't have both sides of this. You'll only have uh, the air brake side, this side, because you do not want an emergency spring brake on your front axle. Uh, the reason for that being, if you lose all the air, say you uh, blow an airline or something, the last thing you want is your front tires locking up on you. Uh, which is basically what happens in this chamber when you lose air. Okay, so now how an air brake works is it moves this push rod. This push rod, uh, I'll flip to the next picture here. The push rod, okay, forces a camshaft, which is right here, to, uh, to twist. And it does that through a slack adjuster. A slack adjuster is basically exactly what it sounds. It's just, you can adjust, uh, there's usually a nut or something on it to adjust the slack so you can uh, get the proper setting. Because this, this push rod will only move a certain distance. Uh, so you need to make sure that your, your adjustment uh, is within limits and that's all regulatory stuff. But anyway, basically for the layman what happens is this moves back and forth, okay, this then uh, gets twisted like a wrench, okay, and it turns this shaft, which applies the uh, the drum brakes, okay. But all you really need to know is that this moves in and out. When it's out, the air brake or the brake is on. When it's in, the brake is off, okay. I can tell you a whole pile more about this stuff, but I don't want to get over complicated because uh, most people are going to have fun learning this all by themselves anyway. Now, the one thing you need to note here, I'll go back to this picture, is that there's ports. Okay, these ports are two-way ports. Air can go in and out. Okay, and the chambers are separated in the center. So this air port is for this side. This air port is for this side. Okay, and there's two chambers. There's this chamber here, which is your, like I said, your pedal brake. There's this chamber here, which is your spring brake. The only thing that that combines the two together is this push rod. They are completely separate otherwise. Uh, separate and independent. So on the inside you can see what I mean. You can see it's divided. Okay. The only thing that combines them is the push rod. There's also a diaphragm that runs down the middle of both chambers. And this diaphragm works just kinda like a balloon. Okay. You can inflate it and deflate the diaphragm uh, using air to basically make it do what you want. Now those air ports I was talking about are right here. There's there's an airport here, okay, and there's another airport right here. And I'm not talking airplanes kind of airport. I'm talking about a hole that allows the air to go in and out. Okay, so your airline would be hooked up here, and another airline would be hooked up here. Now this is when your normal spring brakes are applied. This image here. You can see the rod is out, the push rod is pushed out, okay, 
Uh, now, 90 degree angle here is is an old way of telling whether or not your uh, slack adjuster is set up properly. It doesn't always work that way, but uh, 90 degree is the old is the old adage. If it's at 90 degree, you're good. Okay, don't go by that. Have a professional adjusted for you, uh, unless you've taken courses in uh, doing slack adjusters. Now, as I was saying, the brake's applied. Okay. And the thing that has applied the brake is this spring. This is why it's called a spring brake. There's no air at all in this side of the chamber. You can see that. There's no air in this side of the chamber. Okay. So this is a totally air-free system. Your, your button on the dash is pulled out. Your truck could be shut off, could be running, doesn't matter. Um, but the button on the dash is pulled out. And the brake pedal is not pushed down. You never want to add air here when your spring brake is applied. You'll you'll do what's called over camming, and you can you can wreck a whole pile of stuff in here. You don't want to do that. But uh, anyway, that's a whole other topic. There's no air in this brake chamber at all. Okay, so well, how do we get the brakes off? Well, we have to add air. The way we do this is just by pushing the button in on the dash, either the yellow one or the red one, uh, whichever uh, thing you want to do. And uh, as everybody knows, when you push that button in on the dash, what that does is it, it charges the system. It basically puts air into the air lines. Now, there's no controller stopping air from going into here. So when you add air to the air lines, it automatically flows into here, which uh, blows this up like a balloon. Okay, remember the diaphragm's in here, and it's just rubber, so it can move. Blows up this side like a balloon pushes that spring in. And what that does is it allows the push rod to come back and releases the brake. Okay, so right now the brake is released. This is the configuration that the brake chamber would be in when you're, say, just driving down the road. You have air on this side, supplied just normally by the, by the airlines. Your spring is compressed. Your brake is off. Now, we're, we need, we're coming up to a red light. You don't want to apply your spring brake because that would just lock everything up, of course. You're not going to touch the buttons on your dash there. You're not going to pull them out. That would just be stupid. So we have to apply the brakes another way. This is how we do it. You step on the brake pedal. When you step on the brake pedal, it opens a valve that's usually right under the floor on the brake pedal, and that puts air in this side of the chamber. Okay? And that blows this area up like a balloon. Driving the uh, the shaft out and applying the brake again okay you notice nothing changed over here we still have normal service air coming in blowing this uh, this side up keeping that uh, that uh, spring compressed so the emergency brake is remaining off we've added air via the brake pedal and have pushed the rod out all by ourselves without any help from this side at all so that's what happens when you step on the pedal. And you can say the same thing for the front brake. Uh, the front brake, like I said, just doesn't have this back section. Okay, so you're, you're basically cutting it right down here. All right. And this is exactly how the front chamber works. Now you'll note there's a, there's a spring here that's under compression. All this spring is for is to help push the air out when you let go of the brake pedal. And when you let go of the brake pedal, what happens is uh, an exhaust valve opens up and lets all the air go out into the atmosphere. That's why you get that hiss when you let go of the brake pedal as well. And uh, this spring just aids in that. Uh, it's not a very powerful spring. It's just enough to push the air out, and that's all that's needed. This spring over here is, is more powerful. It uses about, uh, I think, 60 pounds, 60 PSI, in order to compress this spring. So that's why you need to have your air system up. And that's why when you do your air test, uh, your warning light and buzzer and all that, that they have to come on at certain levels because you don't want your light and buzzer coming on after this thing decides it's going to slam on the brake. You want it to come on ahead of time. So that's pretty much it for air brakes. Um, have a great day and I hope uh, it was informative.